Ladies and gentlemen, internet, my name is Perdium, and welcome to The Great Equalizer. A video all about the most difficult puzzles in Survivor history, where we separate the wheat from the chaff, the adults from the children, the brains from the brawn, well, not exactly. Puzzles have been a huge part of Survivor since time immemorial, or season two, episode four, and since then have evolved tremendously, becoming increasingly complicated in presentation and design. And while sometimes they do also devolve, I think it's worth stressing that if you ever plan to play Survivor, Take notes, study the challenges, let's learn a puzzle or two. Before I jump into this top five, I need to mention that there's one exception for this video. I won't be including any word scramble puzzles. Those puzzles are oftentimes so difficult, they would easily compose this entire top five if puzzle experts had anything to say about it. And so instead, they will get their own video in the future, look out for that. And secondly, the puzzle experts I just talked about actually did have a say in this video because I have been working in conjunction with Vexel Puzzles to study the intricacies of survivor puzzles over the decades to help make this video as accurate as it can be. I'll link their shop in the description below. They've created replicas of all kinds of survivor puzzles from numerous seasons, so check them out if you're interested in getting stumped and not taking puzzles for granted. Otherwise, let's talk about the most difficult puzzles in Survivor. First tribe to completely unscramble their puzzle gets three egg-laying chickens and one rooster. Big reward, a lot of eggs. Take your spots and we'll get started. Fighters ready. Go! Number five. I can't begin to understate how there are a lot of puzzles to pull from over the years, so narrowing it down to just five is tricky, but perhaps not as tricky as the latest iteration of the Klotsky puzzle utilized on season 38, Edge of Extinction, in the episode five immunity challenge. It was a five piece slide puzzle that required the players to get the square piece in the middle of each of the L shaped pieces. And with only five pieces, it's surprising it would be higher than most of the other slide puzzles, right? We have seen a lot of slide puzzles over the past few decades, dating all the way back to the Australian Outback, which featured a basic three by three, eight piece slide puzzle. As stock standard as they get. Many slide puzzles since then have become larger, adding more pieces, have become elevated in dimension, or even combined two elements together, such as a slide puzzle and a maze. But most of these puzzles were never exceedingly difficult because they all utilize the same strategy, and once you know how to finesse a slide puzzle, column row, column row, it doesn't usually matter how many pieces exist. We've even seen the Klotsky puzzles before, the one that I'm talking about in Edge of Extinction, except they look slightly differently, such as in the premiere episode of Edge of Extinction, you had to get a certain piece out of the border, but even then, and it's a bit easier than what we're seeing in number five. Because believe it or not, the smaller Klotsky puzzle required 27 movements to solve, despite only having five pieces. The L shapes produce awkward maneuvers that don't seem intuitive, that appear as if you're backtracking, but are actually making progress. If this was just a regular slide puzzle with just five pieces, it would be solved almost instantly, but the same can't be said for this unique design. I wouldn't be surprised to see many people just give up on it. Two people on the puzzle now, gonna be Julie and Julia for comma. Everybody now working on the puzzle. It's okay, you're doing great. Julie gonna step out, Joe and Julia in now. This the puzzle could take a very long time. Jeffrey. Wow, Mama thinks they have it, and they do! Wow! Number four. Back to the trees with ya. I think that's how that saying goes. Number four is another more modern puzzle design that we don't see all too often, but we did see as recently as episode three on Survivor Winners at War. A huge puzzle with numerous branches that two champions had to tackle with 17 bizarrely shaped pieces, several shades of color, and a partridge in a burning pear tree. You may also remember this puzzle from the premiere episode of Worlds Apart, where the tribes had to pick their own puzzle to complete and two of the three of them chose this one. Well, that one was slightly easier as it only a 10 pieces, but this 17 piece version takes the cake. It stumped even some of the greatest puzzle challenge beasts in Boston Rob and Sophie Clark, as it led to a photo finish between the two with Sophie and Sarah narrowly winning. This puzzle is one of the greatest puzzles the producers have ever assembled, requiring visual imagination as there is no distinguishable pattern to recognize a start or end point. Many jigsaw puzzles can be solved with patience, identifying the corners or the borders, but the tree puzzle doesn't 
doesn't lend itself to any of the usual tricks as there are no edges. Well, sort of. I did want to point out that there's a somewhat noticeable black edge to the pieces, which indicates where two pieces will connect. It's not easy to notice. I didn't even notice it when I first watched the episode, especially when you're dehydrated and under pressure out there, but that slight attention to detail could make a difference in solving this puzzle over your competitors. Gotta keep a keen eye. Number three, probably the most visually daunting puzzle I have happened upon. I have to give the third most difficult puzzle to odd shaped bottoms seen twice in Survivor history, first on season 24, One World, and later season 27, Blood vs. Water, used in a duel. Can I just pause the screen and marvel at this behemoth of angles and edges? It's almost crystalline in nature. The objective here is to fit 60 pieces on top of this jagged base until the top layer is flat. If any one piece is sticking out, you gotta reassemble and hope for the best. And this is one aspect of puzzle difficulty that can't be ignored. Just having a lot of pieces can make a puzzle tricky to assemble. Sheer quantity can drive you mad as it can be tedious and take a while and even require montages in the edit just to speed up the viewing experience. These puzzles always look easier when time is edited out. The only part to this puzzle that really helps the solver is the pattern on top, as the moment you discover what it is, you'll be able to better organize which pieces should go where, especially in the case of Blood vs. Water with the yin-yang pattern where we saw John and Candace Cody beast their way through it. But still, 60 pieces. That's a lot of pieces. There are 60 pieces to this puzzle. 60 blocks of wood you have to find the right home for. This is too hard to see. Keep in mind, the puzzle could look right until the very last piece, and then you find out something's wrong. Something's so wrong. keep working on this. What? One is not right, now she's got to get it out. No, Alicia has a piece sticking up. She's not right. Kim, no. Oh, no. Out of nowhere, oh, Jay wins oh, immunity. Number two. Y'all ready for a comeback? How about twice? The second most difficult puzzle in Survivor history first premiered in season 32, Ko Rong, and then reappeared in season 40, Winners at War. Any quick guesses as to which one I may be talking about? I don't have an official name for this puzzle, so I'm just gonna be calling it for what it is. It's Michelle's Tower. Michelle's Tower comes in at number two and has only ever been solved by one person. Michelle Fitzgerald. For this puzzle, players have to create a three-tiered tower using an assortment of blocks with differing length. The blocks are color-coordinated for each tier to make it easier, but all the blocks must be used to form six columns of the same height, upon which you can then place a base flat on top of it to work on the next level. Whereas puzzle number three on this list contained 60 pieces, Michelle's Tower on Winners at War contained 61. Which is nuts, but not the reason why it's number two. Nine people have attempted this puzzle on Survivor. Ty is the only other person to complete the second tier, meanwhile Michelle is the only person to ever complete all three tiers. Here's why it's number two. In spite of all the blocks that you have and all the heights and all the columns you gotta create, in the first tier of this puzzle, there's only one solution. You have 16 blocks that must be organized in a specific way to advance. A major reason why most of the players who have attempted this puzzle never get past tier one. It's specific. And with a lot of pieces to work with, it's only made more difficult. Add on the fact that you then must repeat the process a second time with tier two and then a third time with tier three, it all compounds. Winners at War's version added four more pieces from the Ko Rong variant to make it, I think, a little easier, providing a few more solutions for tier two and tier three, but it's still incredibly complicated. And go figure, only one person has ever solved it. So you know what? I give kudos and major props to Michelle. Aubrey has had a big lead throughout this challenge, but puzzles so often are the equalizer. This requires the ability to see visually really got to be thinking outside of the box. Aubrey absolutely stumped. Michelle has been dead last, but she is making a comeback. Michelle has the first level. Michelle picking up the pace now on her second level. You're going to have to move. 
One more column for Michelle, and she's got the second level. She's got it. Michelle moving on to the third level. Michelle's got some momentum now. This would be a huge come from behind for Michelle. She was in last this entire challenge. Michelle has it. Michelle wins. Individual immunity. Guaranteed spot in the final three. Number one. The most difficult puzzle in Survivor history is not what you might expect. It's a puzzle we have seen several times in varying sizes, sometimes used for travel challenges, other times individually, twice even for duels on Redemption Island. It's a puzzle that can drive you insane, which is why it is fittingly called Instant Insanity. And this is it. The seemingly basic six-sided, four-colored, four-block stack tower that first appeared on Season 19 Samoa and was last seen on Season 40. Winners at War. The object of this puzzle is to stack four blocks on top of each other and arrange them so that each side doesn't have a matching color. To solve it, none of the four sides can repeat, which means you must arrange the blocks over and over and over and over and over and over until you eventually, hopefully, find the solution. And I gotta say, especially for number one, here's the thing with most of these puzzles. They seem simple at first glance, but in execution are far from it. There are over 82,000 possible configurations to make with the standard six side, four color, and four cubes, and what's more, there is no good way to solve this puzzle without writing out the solution on paper, or maybe, I guess, in the sand. There's an excellent video that I will link in the description explaining how to use graph theory to solve it, but when you're on Survivor, that's likely not going to be utilized so easily. For example, in Winners at War, there are only two possible solutions to this puzzle out of tens of thousands of configurations. The only method players ever employ, and likely will ever employ, to beat it is basically brute force. They just keep going and going and going and hoping for the best. You can attempt to be organized with your iterations, but with so many possibilities, a lot of the time it'll come down to just sheer luck. Deceptively complicated, instant insanity. Each side of this puzzle must have four different colors. If you have two of the same color on any side, it is wrong. Green, red, yellow. This puzzle will fool you. You'll be certain and then you'll spin it around and realize, ah. whoops. When you think you have it, let you me know. It, no, no, you have repeating red. Oh, oh almost. It's easy to get three. It's getting that fourth one. It takes the work. Put on my side. Is there a pattern? And this side needs red. We have or is it just process of elimination? Put the red, put the red on this side. Try that. Look no, 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 no. Two yellows. That's a no. No, 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 no. Hold on. Which leg was on top? No, 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 no. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. No way. Edna, out of nowhere, thinks she may have it. No way. No way. Jeff. Two reds. No. Jeff. This side's good. This side's good. This side is good. This side is good. Ozzy wins the duel and stays alive. Phew. That's it. Outside of word scrambles, those are the top five most difficult puzzle challenges in Survivor. Let me know of any other puzzles you think might crack this top five and why. By the way, honorable mentions to the Compass Rose puzzle in Survivor Cook Islands and Heroes vs. Villains that at one point Propes said was their most difficult yet, or the Two Dragons Jigsaw, which just kind of looks cool and has a ton of pieces. And honestly, I've played this one myself in real life. It is really difficult and complicated to put together. I want to give another huge shout out to Vexel Puzzles for their assistance with this list. He graciously sent me a few and I have been failing, absolutely failing at these puzzles in real life and really testing my confidence level at how good I thought it was at doing puzzles. But yeah, otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A big thank you to my patrons for bum puzzling your way onto the screen. And don't forget, on your way out, slow and steady oftentimes wins these races. And I will see you in the next one. Once I observe whatever the heck Tony is doing here on this puzzle. The last phase of this challenge, the only thing standing between him and immunity, Tony is yet to win an individual immunity. Tony sliding pieces around. Tony with a huge time advantage. Question is, does he know how to do slide puzzles? Tony working on the slide puzzle, sliding pieces all over the place, rapidly. Does he know what he's doing? He just lost his mind after 36 days. It is Tony and Spencer now working on the puzzle. Tony has led this challenge from the beginning. Tony's had a big lead sliding pieces around like a madman. Jeff, Jeff! Spencer thinks he has it! 
An incredible comeback! Yes! Spencer yes! wins immunity! Yes! Guaranteed a spot in the final four! I've never done a puzzle in my life. I don't do puzzles. You got out there quick. Yeah, no? I was I flew through You that were laden, stuff. yeah, you were way ahead. No, I, I, I knew I wasn't gonna do the puzzles. I can't do puzzles. I could have been out there for an hour, I wouldn't have got it.